Hey, welcome back, everybody. We are in the middle of our new line panel sections. So we've already seen, oh, we've got a computer issue. We're going to have to get somebody, like if y'all have a second computer, turn that volume off. But we're in the middle of our second one. We've done intermediate. So now we're on to advanced. So I'm going to pop off and Heather, take it away. Okay. So this is our, we did our K2 one. We have our beginning, our blah, 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 can't talk. Our beginning one has been pre recorded. And this is our intermediate training with Nicole Yates and Pam Davis from my old school East Side. And so, you know, I called them. I'm like, look, girls, y'all are fabulous. I need you to help me out. And they were like, absolutely. And they went over and beyond because they have a whole friends themed presentation for you. And it's, it's just fun. So if nothing else, you're just going to enjoy watching this. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to throw your presentation up there. If y'all want to share it, um, share your screen and I will get it going for you. I did share. Okay. I, I think I might've accidentally clicked on it. So if you can share again for me, clickety click, click, I get all excited with my mouse. It's probably my fault, but you do uh -huh. that. All right. Yep. All right. I'll give you a set. There we go. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to add you to the stream. We see everything. I have already dropped a link to this presentation in the chat. So you can go ahead and um, click on that if you want to follow along with them. Also, any questions you have, please go ahead and drop them and I will kind of butt into their presentation and let them know what y'all are asking. All right, ladies, go ahead and take it away. Hi, everybody. I'm Pam. This is Nicole. And whether you're watching us live or you are watching us on our recorded video, we welcome you. We're glad you're here. And we're going to be talking about new line panels and we're the intermediate group. We're in the middle where you're comfortable with turning it on, but you're not quite ready for the advanced yet. So let me show you what we are going to be talking about. Is it sticking? Uh, there we go. Nope. 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 Right here. Back. Back. We got this. It's not going back. Why? There we go. Yep. Okay. We're good. We are professionals. All right. So at the beginning, the one about the beginning, for New Line Intermediate, um, we are going to cover just panel odds and ends, things that you might want to know. We're going to talk about saving energy. Um, programming power. We have a really cool bookmark hack that we're going to talk about. Jamboard and Nearpod are two great um, platforms to use with your new line device. We're going to talk about PowerPoint issues and then just general panel maintenance. So we're going to start off with odds and ends and Nicole is going to take that topic. Okay, so when Heather contacted us and asked us to be a part of this um, tech week, I asked, well, what constitutes intermediate? And she said, just make it more than a glorified whiteboard. So we're going to give it our best shot. Um, I thought, whoops, here we go, messing up. I thought it would be logical to look at the home screen first. Um, I'm, we're assuming that the beginning um, pr presentation went over Windows, how to hook up your PC, went over the whiteboard, and the next presentation will be covering screencasting with the newscast and the broadcast. So we're going to focus right now on gadgets here. Um, the browser is a general Google browser. So there's not really much to say about that. I don't use this link at all. Sorry about that. So let me get to gadgets. Um, to be quite honest with you, when we went over gadgets, I attended the um, New Line panel training in person at the central office. And the New Line representative said that you won't be using many of these gadgets. So I'm going to go over the ones that she focused on. Um, the clock feature has an alarm, a clock, a timer, and a stopwatch. Um, you can also get to that from your home screen on the top left. Why is this not working like it should? Because mm. we're presenting. Oh, um, yeah. I told you my computer sticks. Okay. So the other gadgets, I just listed them here um, in case you want to look through them. 
Um, like I said, I don't use many of these. I do have a hot link here for the new, new line display management YouTube video. So you can check that out. Um, the calculator, uh, we rarely use that in the fourth grade. We practice our own computations. I did take a look at it. It has some functions, uh, square root, um, other functions, upper grades might want to look into. Um, file viewer, we'll get into that. That's from the home screen. We will look at that later on down the line. Let's go here. I want to talk about how you can add apps to your home screen. When you're adding apps, it's going to allow a one touch shortcut. Um, and you want to put your most used apps when you use this. If you look at the screen right now, you'll see the preferred apps I put at the bottom and I'll show you real quick. Also, I did link a quick video tutorial here from YouTube. So if you have the presentation, then you'll be able to click on that link. Right. And Heather, they'll be, they have access. They have access. To this. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. In okay. that presentation, I gave them the link. And so if they right. click on that, anything that you have that was clickable will be clickable for them. So they're In good. In the future as well. Okay. Absolutely. So to add an app, you would click right here where the plus sign is, and then it'll take you to a three tab menu. The first tab, you'll see the download icon. This is where you would um, shoot the ports to save to your home screen. The second tab is uh, the PC icon, and that'll bring you to New Line Assistant. I don't know much about this, but I did click a hot link for that, for those of you that are interested. I think that's more in the advanced territory, and uh, I believe Harley would probably be talking about that next. The last tab is the gadgets tab, which is the same screen. So um, I wanted to talk about some more tangible gadgets. Um, all, we There is no disk drive anymore. You know, the, the OPS, the panel computer does not have a disk drive. Our teacher laptops, the new ones don't have disk drives. Um, you can purchase this $40, around $40, um, portable disk drive. I use a, an old teacher laptop to run DVDs through. And I also use this very um, convenient port right here in the front. So um, this is just something if you are a new line newbie and you are frightened over things like newcast and broadcast, these are two little quick tutorials just to pique your interest. So maybe you can dig into that deeper, but that's stepping into the more of the advanced territory. So I'm going to skip on there, but these are two hot links. Cause you can pair your cell phone or Tablets. tablet with your new line board. So you can project or share what you have um, with your students, both Apple and Android. Now I believe it was just Apple before. Like I would use, I would use mine for writing. I would walk around and use my camera and I would be able to take pictures of what the students were pr producing. And we put it on the screen and we talked about it as a class together. So it kept them accountable and they really wanted to put their work uh, up on the screen. Okay. Um, the docu document camera, we, you, we have to have our technology supervisor at the school to download this because the, you need an admin pass. But once you get that done, it's really easy to set that up. I do have a hot link there as well, a video tutorial to show you where to link to the panel. So, And when you set up your ladybug, you're going to want to plug it into the, the touch, uh, the USB touch, so that you can interact with the screen. I wanted to designate some time to the remote. Uh, Pam and I were discussing the new line panel remote. It is a wonderful tool. She and I are both have been guilty with neglecting this remote. We've been treating it like a smart board remote, remote, freezing the screen or muting the sound or taking the visuals off. Um, but the remote definitely has, it makes you remote actually. So you can, um, take screenshots of your board with your remote. You can um, switch from HDMI to PC back and forth. It has just, if you look through the menu, you can see all the different things that I've 
neglected to use. So you definitely want to look into your remote. And with the remote and wireless mouse and wireless keyboard, you are truly free to roam wherever you would yeah. like to in your classroom. You're not tied to um, your your screen or your laptop. Fifteen dollar set right here. So to makes you totally remote. Okay, let me go back. Okay, this is for the new line newbies. Okay, this link is not working. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <It worked. laughs> to change your theme. Sorry about this, guys. It's real okay. life. To change your theme, it's just three quick, easy steps. You go to settings, which will be the gear at the top right on your home screen. Click display and theme right here. And you have two options. You have the standard option, which is showing right here, and the colorful. Most of us choose the colorful option. I'm sorry, I have to clean this up. She does. Okay, I think you can take it away. All right, now I'm going to talk about saving energy. Now, I have taught lower elementary, and we would turn on our timer at the beginning of the day. The kids would go into the classroom, and they would start their morning routine. Well, I wouldn't necessarily touch the board because I wasn't instructing. I was running small groups. I was um, moving around the classroom, and we would get up and go to the restroom, and when we came back, the board is shut down. Um, that is because when it comes out of the box, there is a 30 minute um, timer for the energy saving mode. So if you come back from lunch or the bathroom and your board is shut down, that's why. Now, after 30 minutes of touch inactivity, it will give a warning and it will shut itself off. Now, usually it says in 196 seconds, your board will turn off. Um, when it does that, you just go and you touch it and it, it'll snap out of it. But sometimes you're not in the classroom and you miss that. So you have to come in and start over and turn it on and log yourself back in. And it can be kind of frustrating. So how do you fix that? First, you're going to go to the settings menu. And what I, this is, um, this is a little YouTube video. It's about one minute and I'm going to play it because it just quickly gives you step-by-step uh, -step directions on how you can turn off that energy saving mode. And that is a very helpful tip if you do not want your board to turn off um, due to inactivity. The steps are listed on this slide, so um, it's there for you, or you can go back and watch the video again. If you have this presentation, you'll know um, what to do whenever you get your board and you don't want it to turn off automatically. Now, sometimes we do want our board to turn off automatically. Sometimes, whoops, excuse me. Sometimes we want our boards to turn on automatically. So how do we do that? Okay, this is the one about power on. When you are in your new line panel in that home screen, 
In the top right hand corner is your little gear. This is your settings. Um, you can click on your settings and there's going to be a whole list of options for you. There's going to be your whiteboard. There's going to be um, one called power. Okay. So when you click, when you scroll down and you find power, um, you're going to go to the auto power on. Now, from this screen, auto power on, this is what it looks like on my screen that you see. This is a screenshot of the screen you would see minus the little happy clock. Um, you were, you're going to go, pro, you're going to program the time that you want your board to turn on. Now, why do you need to do this? If you can, if you do choose to utilize this feature, it's really cool because you can program it to get to, you can program it to turn on right before you get to school in the morning. So your board is on and you just have to put in your password and you're ready to go. Or if you have a substitute, your board is programmed at a time to come on and turn off. So you don't have to worry about having to contact somebody to go in your room and get your new line set up for the day. Okay, so you would program your uh, auto power on uh, and you just set, set your clock like setting an alarm. Okay, and then you would underneath auto power on is auto power off and you would do the same thing. You're going to program the time that you want your board to turn off. So you don't leave the building. And go, oh, my gosh, I didn't turn my new line off. And you get to school the next day and it's still sitting there because you've turned off the energy saver because you don't want it to shut off. So it never does. Um, this will help you remember to turn it on and turn it off. It's helpful if you're not there. And it's just one less thing that you have to worry about. Okay, this is a really cool hack that Nicole is going to share with you. Um, and it also will go in line with one less thing that you have to worry about. Correct. Um, I first learned about this hack. I believe Nikki posted this in the Facebook group, technology group. And I, I did this to my Google Drive because most people that use Google um, Slides, Drives, Google Classroom, they're going to set their new line board to their Google. They're going to sync their Google account to that. So I'm going to show you how easy this is. You right click the bookmark bar, add folder. Give a title. It should show on your uh, bookmark bar right here. Let's say if I wanted to link this, can I do that? Sure. Okay, go back. And I'm going to paste it right in on this, and you can rename it. Click edit and give it a name. I'm going to show you with what I already have here. Put, oh, did I get out of work? Mm -mm. I don't see that. I'm gonna show you, um, you have to get back to this, there it is right there. Uh, when I come in in the morning, I have my school stuff folder. I right click, open all six from here. Everything I need for the day pops up. I have, um, I call it my kickstart slide that when the students come in in the morning, they'll see what I expect for them to do. This was from uh, Steam Knight. Um, I have my both math and science Google Classrooms. I have Discovery Ed. I have my Edge Elastic link. And I might say, you know, we're not getting into Edge Elastic, so I'll just take that out, you know, just for the day. I have my planning also folder here. This is what I use on the weekends. So it's just a great way to organize yourself in the morning. It's just two clicks and you're good to go for the day. And this seems to be like it would be useful. So you don't have to go in and open everything one by one every day. Absolutely. It sounds like a real a time saver. Most people already know about this hack and they do it. They ha they use it on their computer. I love to have access to this on the new line board because my Google, my Google Drive is synced. So. Okay. Now where is it? Uh, go here and go back.
think we're having some technical difficulties. We'll give them a moment to come back in. Um, does anybody that's watching have any questions that I could maybe answer for the um, the new line panels? I used to love in mine when I had mine in my classroom. And it was great to be able to allow the kids to come up and show math work, um, to kind of cast to theirs. Let's see if I can pull up their presentation and we can take a look at some of that stuff. Doo -doo -doo. Let's see, where is it? There's the, no, not that. I need to actually click on it. All right, let me hide that. Okay. All right, let's see here. Okay, so let's share, share screen. We're going to go through this one right here. Alrighty. Okay, so let's see where they were. And hopefully when they pop back in, we can go into that. Okay, energy saving, power off. They talked about that. That one was very nice, especially when you've got um, a substitute in the room. And then that way you don't have to like rely on a kid to show, especially if you have your little kids, you know, they're all experts and everything. Nine times out of 10, they're going to do an okay thing. Um, but that one time you might be like, uh oh, okay, they're back. Hi, y'all. So where did we leave off? Real did you life people. <laughs> Real life. <laughs> well, I, you look, I'm telling you, you never happening. have technical difficulties until you go live. Yeah. Everything else works perfect until that moment you go live and then you're like, well, what just happened? Okay, so, so, yeah. Did you see the book, bookmark hack? You saw all that. Okay. Right. So you were showing the bookmark yes, hack and I was going to show, no, I was going to show them one other thing too. Um, okay, you know, you clicked on the copy, the link or whatever, yeah, but yeah. you can just click on that star. Okay. So if you click on the star, add bookmark, it will still let you choose where you want it to go. Got it. Um, so if you click on bookmarks bar, it's going to, you know, still your folders are here and all that other good stuff. So that's just one other way of doing it. Um, as opposed to having to, um, you know, go in there and copy and paste or whatever. Okay. So yeah. are you all ready to share your screen again? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cause I'll pull mine down and I'll put y'all's back up. Okay, just go ahead and click on the pre. There we are. Perfect. All right. There you go. There you go. Okay. All right. Now we're going to talk about Jamboard and Nearpod and how these are two awesome tools that you can use on your new line. I wouldn't compare the two with each other. They're total different um, platform digital tools. Um, Jam Jamboard is a, a cloud hosted whiteboard. Now I'm afraid to even touch this, You're fine. but you get to it from, can I open yeah. this up? You get to it from the Google waffle. It's right here with the J. There are, um, there's a, a huge bank of freebies in Jamboards that you can use and most of these you can edit. Um, Jamboard allows you to annotate on your slides. It allows you to draw. Um, it has a sticky note feature here where they can practice typing. Um, it you can select images text box, laser, you can choose different backgrounds. Um, we have lined paper, graph. How would a second grade teacher use that? Um, so technically it's kind of like a class bulletin board where mm -hmm. you can put information. We um, You might use it for different ways to solve a problem. Um, here's, your, here's your problem or here's your number of the day. How will you solve, how, will you, how can you equal that number? Um, for ELA, you can put up a question. Kids can put their responses uh, on the sticky notes and they can share um, questions that they may have. They can share uh, 
ideas about definitions. So there's there's things you can break it down from 12th grade all the way down to lower all the elementary. Way down. This is a particular, um, they call it jam. Each board is called a jam, a jam that I use at the end of this year on angles. Um, you, they did a self check. They let me know, you know, hey, I'm okay with this skill. This is what I need help with. I just wanted to show you something else. Go ahead. Now, could you do this for like a homework help? You could set a homework board. Absolutely. You certainly could. Um, this is just in at Eastside um, for math. We teach them how to annotate word problems by cubes where you circle the numbers and see, I'm just annotating right here. I just save this slide, annotate, and they can do it live. And if you have the touchscreen computers, that actually works better for you. I like this. Yes, it's awesome stuff. Okay. This. You can, you said sticky note brainstorming. You can screen Castify with their boards and with the newscast, which some of you will tune into that later you can project your students' laptops and their work on the board too. That's why it works great with New Line. Um, I started teaching in 93. I've seen the evolution of teacher presentations and I'm, I'm dating myself, but I started with a chalkboard. Then we went to she dry did. erase boards <laughs> and um, wrote a grant for the smart board and the New Line board has just put excitement into teaching all over again. I absolutely love it. But I'm going to talk about some pros and cons with Jamboards. There, um, it is free. There are paid accounts if you want to um, pay up to get more options. Um, the cons: it's easy to accidentally if your if your students are collaborating with each other, it's easy for them to accidentally delete each other's work. Um, and there is a limited number of collaborators at a time. You have a limited number of frames, but I've never exceeded the given amount. It's like 25 slides. Um, you cannot hyperlink sites, videos, and graphics. You cannot hyperlink it to Jamboard like you can with Google Slides, which leads me to um, why would you use Jamboard over Google Slides? I do think that it's less complex. Um, it's better for beginners. It's um, it lags less. My feature I like also is it gives you a, a bigger working space too. Whereas in Google Slides, students get an, uh, aggravated because they're going from present to going back and forth, back and forth, so they can see what they're doing. Jamboard um, with this scale here, it fixes that problem. And it allows students to draw freehand too. So, all right, let's go back. Okay, Nearpod is wonderful. It is an interactive lesson and presentation platform. Um, you can create a free account. I will show you an example. Okay, this is an example of a teacher dashboard. These are just some things, some um, features it has. Um, you can convert PowerPoints, Google Slides, PDFs, YouTube videos, and video files into your presentation. It makes your presentation interactive. Um, the free, you, there's free account, which is the silver account. There's a gold account and a platinum account. The free account um, allows many features. Um, let me, I think it's best if I just pull one up to show you. Nope, wrong. Do you have it linked to me? Yes, I got it. Okay, there we go. What you'll see is a split screen of a teacher device on the left and a student device on the right. This is not what I wanted to show. Of course, it's not going to work. Um, again, as with Jamboards, there are many freebie um, selections for me to choose from in the Nearpod library, thousands upon thousands. I edited this, put my own lesson objectives. Um, 
just many different features here, and I want to talk about assessments as well. With Nearpod, you can use open-ended questions. There are polls. Have I gotten to a poll yet? Mm -mm. No. They can free draw in the Nearpod as well. Um, they, there's selections of multiple choice quizzes within your presentation. Um, you can collab, kids can collaborate on, on boards. There's fill in the blanks, matching pairs, gives multimedia such as images, videos, web content, PDFs, all sorts of things. Sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? Well, there is a kick to it. Yeah. Here's the kicker. Um, with the free account, you're only allowed 40 users at once um, for a Nearpod board. So if you are self-contained, this wouldn't be a problem. Or last year I taught one section of science. That wasn't a problem at all. If you teach more than that, you can pay up or you could use this in groups, um, remediation. You can, or you can reassign it. You can close it out like you just do one section at a time. You I haven't tried that. You wouldn't be able to do homework for a whole group because it would be, you know, if you had every section trying to compete to to do the Nearpod for homework at home, that would be a problem. Got it. I wanted to show you what the Nearpod board looks like when you edit. You can add your own slides to an existing Nearpod. You can delete slides. You can convert things to draw it. It's just a wonderful tool that works wonderfully with the new line panel. So and it works really well with your instruction in the classroom. Mm -hmm because you have embedded formative assessments throughout your lesson. Absolutely. And you're continually getting feedback because this is the teacher view. Well, when you're doing the presentation, you're seeing everybody's screen and exactly. what they're putting. Within the, the free account limits there. So, And we use this in second grade. And I, I think you could, there, there are some really cool features they have now for as low as kindergarten and pre-K where you could use this in your classroom. And um, it, it's a wonderful way for student accountability, too. They're always polling themselves, self-checking. Um, it's a good way to get them used to, hey, do I really understand this? Do I not? Let's dig deeper. It's a great tool. I love it. That's it for that one. Oh, and Nearpod also has a great support system, too. There's uh, free webinars and how-to videos all over. Yes. Um, okay, the one about PowerPoint. This was an issue that we had here um, at Eastside, and it was a question of, I can't open PowerPoint files. So if you're, if you're using, you know, Google presentations, you're golden, but when you go to PowerPoint, you can't get it. So... This is an example of the screens that you might see if you go here to your um, file manager and you try to search your OneDrive for your um, PowerPoint. So you, you pick your PowerPoint, it says look for an app in the Microsoft Store. Well, okay. So you, you pick what you want and then a screen comes up that says you want to open it or save it. I have clicked these buttons so many times and the same thing happens, which is nothing. It doesn't open, but, but there's a different way to get to these. So when you're going, okay, I have this file saved. Um, I know it's in my OneDrive. I want to go pull it up. Don't go here to your file manager. You're going to go to your Office 365 app from your desktop. Okay, when you get to that, you are going to open up the PowerPoint from this menu. So this is where you would go to open your Outlook, your um, OneDrive, Excel, all, all those Microsoft components. You're going to open um, your PowerPoint from this place. When you open it from here, you can search for your PowerPoint and it will open. Um, so hallelujah, all those PowerPoints that you have for Open House and all your lessons, you can access them and you don't have to convert them to Google Slides. Um, you just go through your Office 365. I, I do feel like this was one of the main yes. topics that um, teachers were wondering and asking about this and the iOS um, hookup. Yes. With tablets and phones. And yeah. Yeah, that'll be talked. We have uh, on my hall as well. We had a lot. I can, 
one teacher was very frustrated. She's like, I can't use my PowerPoint. You just have to go a different route. So if you can't figure it out one way, there's got to be another way to open it. So the reason behind that is, is we do not have the um, Microsoft applications actually installed on the computer. So that's why they won't open unless you go into the online versions. Right. Um, so these, these onboard computers that come built into these new line panels do not have a ton of storage. So you do not want to upload a ton of programs that could eat up your storage, especially if you've got like a, a web-based option. So definitely use that, uh, little, I like to call it the Lego one. I'm not even quite sure what it's supposed to be, but the 0365 thing on your desktop, or there is a direct link on the LPSB.org homepage in that, um, the bar right at the top, 0365. Right. Well, Heather, you've given us a great segue for the next slide, which is about panel maintenance. And we're going to talk about cleaning your panel, storage, and topical as well, the outside. Go here. Sorry for all the links. Um, as Heather said, there's not much storage on your OPS panel computer. Um, the display will automatically delete screenshots and whiteboards after 30 days. You can change that. You can make it more frequent. You can make it less frequent. Pam and I were talking. The more you use your board, the more um, you train yourself to avoid the screenshots and, you know, use the broom at the bottom to clear your annotations or whatever you're working on. So to, we're going to go back to the home screen here and uh, we're going to go to file viewer here. So we're going to talk about cleaning out our storage. You select file viewer from here. It'll bring you to another screen. It's called the file commander. I took a picture of, um, this part right here on, on that board, internet storage, this is my actual board here. I can see I'm pretty good. My board's working pretty fast. I don't have much things stored. I'm going to show you what to do to clean out your files or delete files individually. You go to your file commander menu. And these are all the images that I have stored. If you're going to delete these individually, you click the vertical ellipsis and this menu will pop up and you can choose to do with what you will. And more times than not, I'm deleting. Um, this is just a quick YouTube link to getting to know the file commander if you're interested in knowing more um, ins and outs with the file commander. Before we do that, Pam would like to tell you about del um, deleting. Deleting all. all. Yeah. Okay, so if you pull up your pictures, like mine on my new line panel would be all screenshots of things that I had annotated and it sent off to this, this file. So if I click on the first, first image, um, in the top right hand corner, you're going to see some options. You're going to see scissors. If you want to cut the image, you're going to see uh, a copy, you can copy it and duplicate it. You're going to see a trash can. Um, and then you're also going to have your three dots, your ellipses. So what you're going to do is you will uh, click on the ellip ellipsis and you are going to select all. So then you can select every image that's in your pictures and then hit the trash can. And it'll say, are you sure you want to delete more than one image? Yes. Um, and it'll help clean out your pictures, things that you did not want um, in there in the first place. Now, if you don't want to delete all, then you can um, highlight, you can click on your picture and this, the, the bottom bar, the label, the title will turn gray. You can hit shift and click others that will also turn gray as well. And you can um, pick and choose what you want to delete. When you have them all selected, hit your trash can. Um, so that'll help you kind of keep your, your storage free, uh, from un when you have things that you're not going to use. On, uh, okay. On the flip side to, um, open files and 
pull files from other sources. A USB drive works really well. You insert the USB into the port. Um, you're going to pull up the file viewer, select USB from that menu. It'll bring you to your file commander menu and you select file. I'm a visual type of learner, so I did a hot link again with the YouTube tutorial right there. It's like a minute and 30 seconds. If I wouldn't have done that, this would be a two-hour presentation. <laughs> That's why I clicked all those hot links. Okay, um, panel maintenance, whoops, save that one. I didn't realize that the True Touch Cleaner was also a disinfectant, and I know that's very important. Yes, I did not realize that. Um, there's a difference between cleaning and disinfecting. Um, this not only cleans the surface, but it also disinfects it. Um, you wanna make sure you power down before you do that, let your panel cool. Um, you never want to spray directly on the panel. You want to spray on the cloth they give you or some other soft cloth. And they do the wax on, wax off motion. These are things that you do not want to do. Um, and these are pretty obvious. Do not use ammonia, coarse cloth or scrubber, harsh soaps or chemicals or bleach. I also um, snipped this part at the bottom here um, in case you need more. And all right, one thing that we included just in maintenance and general questions is we have an amazing tech department at our central office and they work so hard to provide information for everyone. So if you're in a pinch and you don't know how to do something on the LPSV homepage, there is a digital help tab that you can go to. The drop down menu will share resources, parent help if you have parents who have questions, teacher help. This is us. Help, help. Um, help, help, help. So you have tip sheets. There's resource if, master list. If you roll, scroll here. I'm sorry. The cheat sheet for the new line board. I would print that out and have it at the ready. It's right. Yeah, here. I would definitely have that at the ready. Right. So they do have a, um, they do have a, a whole page dedicated to new line panel information. And this is the page. What what? Um, and I agree with what Nicole said. This cheat sheet, print it and keep it handy. Um, and then webinars that we've both attended to are right here. They're both the same, but they were presented at different times. Um, lots of good information there. So there, and, and then there's the support line, the tech support line. They love it when you call them. <laughs> um, so when you uh, have, you, you want to learn more about it, you know, we're going to have these videos handy, but there's also this provided by our district, which is awesome. There's also YouTube channels that are devoted to new line tech support. So there's so much information out there. Don't um, give up because something didn't work. You know, we'll, we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we have time, Heather, I wanted to go back to the bookmark hack real quick. I just wanted everyone to see how wonderful this is. Uh, once you create your folder on your bookmark hack, I'd hate for us to get lost again. You right click. And from there, it's recess. Oh, all time. Ah! From there, everything that I need for the day pops up from my um, bell ringer slide. And we had a Star Wars themed steam night. Um, that pops up. My math and science Google classrooms pop up. Now, it does take a while for it to boot, but I do this first thing in the morning. No, that is My, like the best hack ever. I I'm kind of like, it. has this always been possible? Or was it just like this year that we everybody finally just discovered that that could be done? I don't know. I don't know. I love it. I love it. I strongly suggest to use it. You have all your items pop up and you might decide, hey, I'm not using Edge Elastic today. We don't have an assessment. So I'm going to just take that out. You know, it won't be removed right. from your tab or your folder, but it'll be removed for that day. 
I love this, love this, love this. And I also create, I love it so much, I created a weekend folder here with the things that I use most. <laughs> Girl. Plan. Okay, so, so I don't know if you know this. I'm going to teach you another hack that might just blow your mind. Okay. All right. Absolutely. So um, if you right click on that planning one, the planning folder, uh -huh. all right, and go to edit or rename. I guess it's rename. Go back up. There you go. You can actually delete the word. And because it's planning, you could go get like an emoji of a notebook and put yes. it there. And then what happens is you don't have all of these words taking up real estate on your bookmark bar. You can have only icons. Oh you don't actually goodness. have to have any letters there at all. But because I'm, I'm emojis gonna... are considered, go ahead and do it while I'm talking. Because emojis are considered characters. Um, they take a place right there and you can do that with anything that you bookmark. So if anything, it's called a favicon basically. Um, so notice yeah, right there, it's got a little folder and stuff. That. I know. I love it. So click I on your school stuff one. So you see how they all, I mean, like your, your Google classroom ones are a little bit difficult to do because they look almost identical, but like your discovery edge, your edge elastic, those right there, if you wanted to, you could get rid of the word discovery edge and edge elastic and only Got have it. the little picture there. Um, that. So that's just one other little thing. Like everybody's like, how do you have so many bookmarks on your bar? I'm like, cause I delete out the words. Love <laughs> that's that. awesome. uh, it gives so, you more space on that bookmark yeah. bar too. I love Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So now this is the one about the end and <laughs> we are glad that you tuned in, whether it was live or whether you're watching at a later time. And, you know, Nicole and I are both ready and willing to answer any questions that you may have. Consider us a resource. Heather, Nikki, um, Lynn, the tech department. We want to thank you for tuning in and, um, good luck with your new line adventures. Absolutely. And do not forget, guys, to fill out the survey and attendance link. It's bit.ly forward slash Tech Week 21, capital T. That is important. Give us your feedback. What do you need to know? You know, what did you like, not like? You know, we are always trying to better our craft at what we're doing. So don't worry. You're not going to hurt our feelings. Let us know. Um, also, by doing so, you enter yourself to win some pretty cool prizes. And as we mentioned in the one before, we got some things specifically forward like new line panel type thing. So when they were talking about making yourself completely mobile, we may have gotten some things to allow for that. So I know, right? So make sure that you um, you fill that out. I did have one question while y'all were um, presenting about the cleaning. Somebody said, what is the best way to clean the cloth? That cloth is just a basic microfiber cloth. Um, so what you want to do is you want to make sure, you know, wash it in either cold or warm water, not hot. You know, use a milder detergent, maybe even just some baking soda and vinegar. Don't use fabric softeners though, because fabric softeners will clog up those pores and it, it changes the way that the cloth works and just let it air dry. And I don't think that there's a specific how often should you do it. I mean, I guess it depends on how often you use it in your classroom. If it looks dirty, go ahead, take it home and wash it. Um, you could even hand wash it if you wanted to, if you didn't want to waste power with, with your um, washing machine. So, um, well, Heather, what I wanted to ask you, most mm -hmm. schools that are purchasing these new line panels, are they getting the mobile carts? with it or are they? Okay. So the, the package that we've put together with the company that we're getting these from, it's priced for the panel mm -hmm. with the computer and a cart. Um, because I will so, tell you, if you, you, you unplug the dock camera and the outlet, I have had classes in the glass class with my panel. Mm -hmm. I brought my panel into the maker space. It makes it's you mobile. Completely mobile. The students love helping me carefully roll it down. I know. All you have to do is be able to plug it into a wall and get some power because it's Wi-Fi. So, yes. you know, you're not, you're not limited to where you can put it in your classroom. And a lot of people think that they don't want the cart, but the cart really does make a difference as far oh, as absolutely. how you can constantly restructure the way that your classroom is set up, take absolutely. it outside, um, you know, do what you need to do with it. Also, a lot of people do not realize um, how heavy those monitors are and trying to help set one up. They're about 300 pounds. They are not light. And so having them on those bases really kind of gives it some 
um, stability. Keep in mind, and I said this in the last one too, that those bases have it where you can set that monitor really high or really low, depending on the age of the students you teach and the height of the teacher. So obviously mine was pretty high. And yeah, um, it's back here. It's the tallest one. <laughs> <laughs> Tall to them, put it as high as it can go. Mine's the shortest one. Right. right. So, you know, if you've got little short people in your classroom, you just get them a little step stool. You know, the ones that they get when you're putting them by the sink for them to brush their teeth or potty right. train, those kinds of things. I just brought all my stools that I had because my kids at home weren't using them anymore. Well, and the um, stand so, is real sturdy. I probably you yes. might be ill advised to have students do it, but I've been known to stand on the stand. And yeah, don't. It's very sturdy. As an adult, you do you, but let's not let the kids do no, that. No, 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 no. So, anyway. All right. Well, I want to thank y'all for joining in. You can join us in the next 10 minutes, and we will go over some advanced options for new line panels with Ms. Harley DeKaiser from um, Albany Middle. Again, Nicole, Pam, thank you so much for taking the time to put together such a wonderful presentation and share your knowledge with Livingston Parish. We do appreciate it. Uh, let us know if y'all have any questions and enjoy the rest of your day.